Yeah, we can ask if the, from the people. Hello. Uh, test. Simo, Hello. Can you say something? Hello. Okay. Is our audio balanced? Okay, so I'm still getting set up here at least. Mm. Do we have anyone watching us? I think we have a few people. What kind of icebreaker should we have for today? Um, Let's see. Good start the discussion. question. Uh, Maybe something. That... Yeah, go right now. Mm. Well, we could ask things like what kind of parallelism mm. you use, or like, or given what you know now, how do you use the mm. cluster or bigger res? Ah, oh, Enrico had a thought. Do you think your work could be parallelized? That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah, today we are going to have a lot of talk about the <clears throat> uh, parallelizing your work. So, so the uh, like the HPC, like the high performance, probably of the high performance computing. It's interesting to see what what people have. Let's see if this works. Oh, uh, whoa. And do remember to give us feedback also at the end of the day. Uh, like the feedback is the only way that we can like decipher whether whether what we're doing is, is good or not. Also, uh, we would like to plug many other resources at the start here today. So uh, yesterday, we already did a lot of work with um, with a command line, for example, uh, which is a tool that is invaluable. Like it was mentioned in the first day quite a bit, the command line. It's, it's very, it's invaluable when it comes to like scientific computing and especially a high performance computing because that's the like the direct way of talking with the machine uh, without any like any intermediaries so uh, learning about it is very very good idea uh, especially if you know that you're going to be doing this for a longer longer time so uh, there's plenty of good resources on that so our uh, own bash course uh, is is really good. Like uh, you can you can take it, and it's it's really really mm -hmm. fast, really good way of getting yourself accustomed to the command line a uh, setup. Then there's also like great resources on the on CSC side mm -hmm. uh, on on cluster usage, and then also uh, 
code refinery has uh, great resources on Git uh, usage, project management, all kinds of stuff like that. And also the upcoming code refinery course is coming in March, right, Richard? Yes, um, it's actually on the code refinery webpage. Yeah, so we we might want to link on that in the uh, so so there will be well everything you might want to know about like how to how to get better at at coding and managing your workflow and managing like learning about notebooks learning about version control uh, how to do, how to do stuff uh, efficiently it's very good like because then you might uh, these like doing these hands-on things it might be easier to uh, to get actually uh, accustomed to the to these tools that we are using. Yeah. Did you mention the research software engineer service yet? No, you can do mention. Yeah. So like we sort of implied on the first day, we are covering a lot of different things. And there's basically like, I mean, there's so much that a person might need to know. And we realized that not everyone is able to, like not everyone needs to, or has time to learn everything in the amount of time they have. So that's the idea behind this service here, which mm, here. So in the service, um, we basically have people like us here who go and directly help your work. So instead of saying, okay, here's what you should do, good luck, go figure it out, we can go and directly improve your things. So we can do the software programming for you if you need to. We can... Um, automate the workflow. We can help you scale it to Triton. We can optimize it and so on. And I think this is really important because I mean, there's so many different ways of doing computing and so many different styles. Like it's not just the um, people that have been messing with Linux and um, that kind of stuff for many years that need to do this. So we allow everyone to be able to get stuff done. I guess a good way to get started is our daily garage. So if you're at Alto every day at one o'clock, we're in a Zoom meeting. Well, I mean, not today and during this course. Actually, there have been people there during this course, but we're basically there and you can drop by and ask us any simple question. So you can say, um, I'm doing such and such. Is this a good idea? Um, should I ask for your help to do more? And so on. Also, um, I'm pretty certain that other universities have similar things going on. These are getting more popular because mm. uh, these kinds of uh, incent like uh, organizations, because uh, the there's so much of this coding and, and best practice and all kinds of stuff that is related to scientific research, but it's not related to the science necessarily. So mm -hmm. uh, it's good to ask people who are specialized in these kinds of like uh, coding things and best practices and and uh, like to ask, ask help for any kinds of like uh, problems that you might have before you start a project or when you're stuck in your project so but yeah we are i think oh, we're it's time yeah i think we are ready to start okay but, yeah yeah so hmm. should we quickly summarize what we did yesterday right yeah let's see mm. Yeah, so yesterday, where did we start? So yesterday we, we went to the actual cluster. We <clears throat> run some commands interactively so that they would run on the compute nodes instead of 
just a login node. But then the meat of the day was that we run these serial jobs. And these serial jobs uh, were um, uh, like, like scripts that we wrote instructions for the compute nodes to run when they went through the queue. So we had a queue system that manages the job allocations and the serial jobs were then the instructions of what the jobs were uh, running when they well ended up running eventually on on a compute node and we tested yeah. out different kinds of serial jobs and, that, and now we are basically like moving uh using that basic framework of idea of like we have this script that that we give to the queue system and then we uh, push it to the uh, queue and run it on the compute node we make that uh, into well more advanced stuff today mm -hmm. so so yeah i guess we have three ways of parallelizing things overall yeah so so there's a few ways and we have a uh, first the array jobs which is this kind of like a uh, 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 what's it called? I, I mm. forgot. Uh, even like a, a, a embarrassingly parallel. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the word. Emba embarrassing to yeah. forget that, but for the embarrassingly <laughs> parallel way of uh, parallelizing things, or like basically like adding more more people doing the basically adding more pots to the to the pasta analogy that we had. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, uh, these actual parallel computations that are basically like we want to individual jobs we want to give it more resources to run faster so we give it more gpus to run mm -hmm. and then we have the gpu uh, resources that are like they are parallel uh, cal calculations done by the gpu which is this processing unit that can do these parallel calculations mm -hmm. uh, in the in the se like separate card accelerator uh, and in the middle, we have a nice talk from CSC, where we will be talking about how, uh, well, they will be uh, like introducing their services and uh, telling how you can scale up to even bigger systems and how you should, uh, how you can get even more resources uh, yeah. in the national level. Yeah, I mean, so you might think that Triton is large, but at the scale of CSC, it's not very large. But also yeah, then so there's we, more yeah. like effort moving things from place to place to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Should we, we start with the array jobs? Yeah. Okay. 